I'm Phil Guyman. I was a pro cyclist for 10 years. Now I'm retired, but I still train as hard as I can to set the best times on the toughest climbs I can find and go on fun adventures on my bike all over the world. This is Worst Retirement Ever. So the, the main point to remind you guys, I was trying, I was planning to do this free Phil's Tour of California thing, uh, and that was going to be my big campaign for No Kid Hungry this year. Uh, that got canceled, and we're doing this instead. So we're, we're making this free weird entertainment. Ben and I are going to suffer uh, for, your, for your enjoyment and, and for the kids to, to eat. So please donate. There's a link in the thing. Uh, let's get us to $100,000 for this year, and then I'll leave you alone. With COVID going on, uh, a lot of kids rely on schools to, to get their, their breakfast and lunch, um, and that's been removed. So No Kid Hungry is helping fill that gap all over the country. They do awesome work. So please donate, and uh, let's make something good out of this total mess of a world that we're in. I've introduced Ben before. He's, uh, he's my comrade, K-O-M-R-A-D. Uh, we've been quarantine training. We were training together when quarantine started, and we were like, cool, we're going to keep training together uh, and, and figure this out. And then as quarantine wore on, we are like, we got to do something other than train. And so we set this goal of Everesting and, uh, and trying to get the Everesting record. So uh, that's, that's part one here. So this video, we're going to talk about uh, the, the dorkery behind figuring out which climb to do and how to do it and pacing and uh, dorkery, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is uh, welcome to Strava dorkery. This is some deep dorky shit. So we found our hill. It's, uh, it's super steep. There's places for, uh, for the, the wives and girlfriends to park and, and feed us all day, being super bored. Um, you can see Mount Baldy in the distance. There's a beautiful snow-capped Mount Baldy. You can see downtown on a clear day, which it is clear because no one's driving. And uh, at the top of this, right now, normally this road is a little bit busy uh, because there's houses at the top. So th over there is Bel Air. What is this? Is this still Bel Air technically? We're on the wrong That's side of the That's a good question. I bet they want to think it's Bel Air. Yeah, for sure. They tell you they live in Bel Air. Basically, this is some, this is some rich folks area. Uh, the main traffic on this road normally is a country club that's right there. So this is where like your Larry Davids are playing golf. Um, people are valeting their Bentleys all the time. Now that's closed now, so th that makes this a perfect time to, uh, to do this effort on a completely empty road. Um, actually, Ben, why don't you explain what Everesting is for the people? So reset that real quick. All right, so Everesting is riding the complete height of Mount Everest, which is, according to the Everesting folks, 29,029 feet, um, all in one climb. So it has to be repeats up and down. Right. In our same case, hill. yeah, same hill. So to start, we looked at the at the previous records, the previous fastest times uh, in Everesting attempts. So the, the leader is, is this guy named Tobias, who's in Australia. Second place is actually a former teammate of mine named Scotty Weiss, who lives in Virginia. And both of those climbs were crazy steep. The climbs that they did were super steep. I think Scotty's was 9%, and Tobias was like average 12 or something with kicks up to 20. So clearly, like, to get the Everesting record, it was a matter of finding the steepest hill available, right? Um, so we were looking at steep hills, and then what other qualifications? I think it can't be too steep. There's obviously a ridiculous steepness point if it averaged 20. Like, we have some steep stuff in the Santa Monica's. Sure. That would be too much. But um, also, you want it to be really straight. That's another key right. because you don't want the descent to take any extra yeah. time. I didn't want any. I didn't want any hairpins. I don't. I don't trust myself to be able to handle technical riding after seven hours or even after one hour. Yeah. Um, so definitely, we wanted. We wanted a straight hill. So we narrowed it down to a few in LA. We kind of looked around and we settled on on this guy, uh, Mountain Gate Drive, Mountain Gate F. We should probably know this. We're going to know it very well. It's Mountain, it's Gate. Mountain Gate something. The uh, Basically, if you've ever driven over the 405 uh, from the valley into LA, on your right, you just see this like ominous, twisty, straight up wall thing. Uh, that's Mountain Gate. I've driven past it a thousand times. And I was like, what is that? And then I went and got the KOM one time just because I'd seen it too many times to not have the KOM. And it's like 10 minutes from my house. Uh, so we did that. And, uh, and yeah, this seems to be the best the best option for Everesting here. And you had actually picked it out before we started really nerding out. Right. And so then we realized it was right in between to 
Tobias, Tobias. and Scotty's hills. Yeah, they're great. So it seemed like it's right in the sweet spot. It's longer than Tobias's, but steeper than Scotty's. So that there's if I would have wanted something longer, like if there was a 20 minute climb, I would I would err on that. Yeah. But uh, there is no 20 20 percent <laughs> long ass climb. That mountain doesn't exist. Uh, but it's also, you know, the more, the shorter the climb, the more recovery you get, or the, the more often you get recovery, I guess. So this is looking at like, uh, well, what was our pace? So then our next step was, let's look at how many feet it is, and, and we'll get into that later. Um, how many feet it is, and, and how many laps we'd have to do, uh, as well as the, the, the up and down time. So tell us, <laughs> tell them what our first try was like. <laughs> On that one? Yeah, we had, uh, we got a little over ambitious, I think. Our first effort, we were trying to target like around 350 for yeah. the repeats. Um, and we did, what did we do, two hours or something? We did two hours with a stop and we were like... And we were cooked. We were like, this Everesting thing is a stupid idea. It and was really hot. It was, a, it, was a, it was the first hot day to give ourselves excuses, but <laughs> it was nasty. Uh, and then we look back and we're like, oh, actually, that, at that pace, we would take the record by like two hours, uh, which means it's impossible. So we, we went back and we knocked it down. So we did efforts at like 280 watts, 290 watts, 300, and then so we'd go up. And then this is our turnaround spot right here. And then we just rip back down. We just did a few of those laps at different efforts to, to test it. And then it was like, okay, this is this seems 300 watts all day is insanely hard, but potentially doable, um, and that still puts us in the range to to take this record. Yeah, but so we know what we need to do. It's about seven up and one down. Now, one problem that we ran into is the the altitude discrepancies, right? So what? So Ben and I we each did a few laps and. His said like 477 feet per lap, and mine was 479. And it's like, that doesn't matter normally. And then when you correct it on Strava, it was another number that was similar. And the discrepancies don't matter, except if you're going for a record, it does matter. Right? Yeah, yeah, we want to know the exact length of yeah. feet climbed per lap. I don't want to do one extra foot, is my point. I want to be done and know that I'm done. So we're trying to figure out the altitude, and then I realized, and this isn't me trying to cleverly integrate sponsors like I do, except I'm not as clever as I think I am. Uh, you guys know what I'm doing, but you're cool with it. The Integrated Informatics, my title sponsor, they are, they are a GIS company, which I'll have to ask him what that means, but what they do is they, uh, they analyze stuff like altitude and, and mostly like underground. I'll, I'll let Jason explain it, but he's gonna verify the effort for us. He's gonna do a better job than me. So. Yeah. Do you know what GIS stands for? So now we're here with, with Jason from Integrated Informatics. Uh, Jason, can you first tell me what does GIS stand for? What is it? What do you do? Well, what I do, probably a little difficult to answer, but the uh, GIS itself is a geographic information system. So it's a technology, kind of like a mixture between mapping and databases and a lot of people are probably familiar with it, but looking at things like uh, uh, Google Maps and using it for like, you know, getting driving directions. But uh, us, we use it in the oil and gas sector and uh, health health sector and a few other places. And, and we do things like, you know, we do like land mapping and, uh, you know, crop yield calculation or, you know, facility siting. And it's all using uh, a lot of uh, map-based uh, information as well as underlying uh, data like you know addresses and coordinates that uh, get collected from uh, surveyors and, uh, okay. and the like. So what, what you're saying is you might be qualified to tell me the actual altitude of a Strava segment? <laughs> uh, I might be qualified, yeah, and definitely some folks at work for us are highly qualified for it. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> so walk me through what, what you did and, and what you found. All right. Well, you sent sent me an email and uh, kind of asking a question, and it was totally totally within our wheelhouse what you asked. It was basically like, "Hey, I need a verification of some elevation." So uh, you gave me a couple of URLs to uh, to set some segments. Uh, I wrote wrote some code to pull those down and actually convert them into spatial data or mapping data. Pulled it into one of our systems, and then from there we were able to see kind of where where it was. Uh, use that to find out uh, that the USDA had uh, some high resolution, one meter resolution uh, 
uh, elevation models or di digital elevation models available. So using that and your and your segment, uh, what we're able to do is extract out the elevations kind of uh, every one meter along that, that segment and determine kind of what the uh, overall gain uh, was over that over that segment. My my Wahoo said 480, and the number that you came up with was well 479 and change, but close close to 480. Well, yeah. listen, this is a record attempt, so the the, the I want it to be that precise. Um, <laughs> so I, that uh that's that's perfect. Thank you very much for that that assistance. I I did this thing so with with that information with I plugged in 479.9. Uh, was was the number that you'd sent and I plugged that into this I found this software called Microsoft Excel um, yeah. it's this thing and I made what they call a spreadsheet I don't know I'm an English major that turned bike racer but I found I made this spreadsheet I'm really proud of myself so according to this if it's 479 feet I have to do 60.489 laps that's that maps out to 29. Have you ever tried one of these spreadsheets? I'm telling you, like this might be really useful in like work applications. This isn't your first uh, your first foray into Strava dorkery. Um, can you can you confess to to your system for chasing KOMs around Houston? Oh, yeah, well I can admit to some of it. Uh, yeah, so knowing knowing what I know, uh, uh, you know. A lot of times, the only way to know there's a segment that exists is if you ride over it, or maybe you go to the segment explorer and you kind of zoom around. But a lot of the uh, sprint style segments around town, uh, it's kind of like, how the hell am I going to find all of these segments without you know ri riding them first or spending eons, you know, uh, in front of the computer, just oh. trying to trying to like, zoom in and zoom in. And you know, if the segment was long, you know, it, it might be off screen. So. I ended up uh, just kind of writing an application and that went out and, uh, you know, pulled down segment data from um, actually a couple of places, but mostly, mostly from Strava. And then uh, and, uh, it wasn't really happy with the results there, so I did something else, which I won't admit to, because I want to I wanna keep my Strava account. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But uh, not, nonetheless, uh, I think it was in the terms of use, barely. And and uh, and did uh, pull pull some more information, and then what uh, built up a database locally, so I can actually look at kind of the various segments that uh, are here in Houston, and I've got them kind of graded by by speed, graded by wind direction. <laughs> I know I know I know who has them all, who's on the top ten. So if somebody if somebody decides to take one from me, I can go take one from them pretty easy. Even, even, even if I don't follow them. Well, that's beautifully petty. Is there, um, are you, are you selling this software or is this all proprietary? This, it's not, is it, I wouldn't even go so far as proprietary. This is that absolutely just some, some, something fun to do. All right. And now we're going to talk to, to the Everesting people. We're going to consult the, the bosses of Everesting. Uh, so we've got Andy Van Bergen and the, and the history of Everesting. It was, uh, there was something interesting there. It was the the first guy to climb Mount Everest, is that right? Absolutely right. So the uh, the, the first guy to climb Mount Everest, Mount Everest was uh, was George Mallory. His grandson was attempting to uh, replicate that by like celebrate uh, one of the anniversaries by mountaineering and climbing the, the height of Everest. This is like back in the early nineties. Mm -hmm. So as training for that, he he picked a hill and just decided to do some ergo training. And would just ride ride repeats, but he was an engineer. He worked out the perfect hill and the amount of reps okay. and everything. And he'd taken a year off his job to to train for climbing yep. the actual Mount Everest. And at some point during the training, he was like, "Hey, a sweet little training target would be, you know, if I climbed eight times this mountain, it would be the equivalent height of Mount Everest. That, that'd be kind of nice." Now he went on to summit Mount Everest. He didn't quite get there in his training to do what, what's now called an Everesting. Okay, uh, but he but did it, it in real of, life with a. He did, yeah. When, okay. he, when he came so we'll back, we'll give it to him. <laughs> well, well, when he when he came back, he he still had that in his mind, so he did end up doing it a few years later. Got it. I uh, love so it. He could literally climb Mount Everest and not finish the training for it. Totally, totally, yeah. yeah. And then right after I did all of my math, I saw that you have a segment calculator on the website. 
I felt really bad because I saw you've gone to obviously what was quite a lot of trouble to work this out precisely, yeah. but we've got this beautiful little Everesting calculator that you can just, you literally just plug in the Strava segment. It will tell you everything. You, you put in your projected <laughs> weights and times and, and it'll right. work out everything and say, hey, Phil, you just got to climb 61 reps. Okay, well, I, I did math unnecessarily. Um, and I'll just have to live with that and I can never have those minutes back, but I appreciate you doing that. So the website, gone forever. <laughs> so the website for, for anyone who wants to look at the rankings and, and all of that is what? Yeah, just head to everesting.cc. Who I'm, we're selling a, a shirt to benefit no kid hungry and it says Everesting day. You can buy that if you've never ridden a bicycle. That's, that's how inclusive we are on my channel relative to these guys. <laughs> I, I love that. I'll, I'll definitely be get one of those shirts myself. <laughs> and then the last thing is the the current record holder. Um, I was hoping to speak to him, and I know that obviously you have his contact. Uh, I figure you guys have like walkie talkies, and you bro out and stuff. <laughs> um, Pretty much. <laughs> so could you could you put me in touch with? I believe it's pronounced Tobias. Tobias. It could be that's Tobias, right. but I'll double check yeah. with him. Yeah, because he's currently got the record at uh, eight hours. Mm -hmm. 29 minutes and 11 seconds not to be too precise but yeah no that's so that's, that's how records are they got to be precise that's it. Minutes. okay all right so i'll uh you'll you'll put us in touch and i can give him a call next perfect i'll, uh, I'll hook you guys up awesome all right thanks andy appreciate it thanks a lot cheers now we've got tobias on on the old skype um tobias lestrel not tobias but but we can i can call you toby because we're bros now right yeah, you can call it Toby. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you are the you're the current and and possibly future, depending on because I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. Uh, record holder of the of the Everest Challenge. Um, what uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. You were a pro. Uh, I was actually never a pro. No. Uh, you I was won the tour like six, seven times. I saw your numbers. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> Not really, but uh, I was chasing that dream back back in the 90s. Uh, did a uh, did a season as a top top level amateur in Belgium in '99, okay. but sort of realised that I was not quite good enough there. So I decided to go for a normal career, study and all that sort of stuff. And then I finally got back to riding again back in sort of around 2010. Started commuting to work, started racing again in 2012, and there just got into 24 hour mountain biking out of all things right <laughs> so i got into everesting i first thought it was a crazy thing when i heard about it i thought why, why would you do that well, you'd that's be just, correct that's nuts. <laughs> yeah that's just nuts i heard of people doing it locally and i was right. like wow that's that's crazy yeah it's all about pacing yourself and eating correctly and yeah going hard over a long period of time i got the record back in 2017 in february this isn't a super safe thing to, it's not easy on the body i feel like no it's certainly this not this is the limits of... not. and also Okay. Yeah, it pushes the limits of everything. But I mean, you're you're pretty well equipped. I've seen your power numbers recently, and that's that's just scary. You haven't seen me for eight hour rides, have you? <laughs> I'm, I'm sort of suspecting you you'd be able to sit on I don't know three thirty or something maybe at three twenty. I don't know about that long. I tried. I did a couple efforts. Like I I did two hours at a pace that I was thinking to do. I, I did I did three forty, and then I was like, no, we have to back it way off. <laughs> My, my Everesting hill, it's literally, I, I can ride there within 10 minutes from my house. So I, I knew the hill very well, and I'd done heaps and heaps of repeats there before. And I sort of, I knew my comfortable pace. And uh, yeah, it was just a matter of <laughs> sticking to that pace for as long as possible. And of course, right. I faded a bit. My, my climb isn't quite as steep as yours. Ours is like 10%. Feel free to not give me any advice because you figured it all out yourself. And reading, reading the description on your Strava, I'll put a link in there too. I just, I really enjoyed the, the dorkery of it. Um, cause I was deep in myself and what's cool is like, you figured it all out yourself and, and now yeah. I want to ask you for tips. And if you want to just tell me to F off and figure it out myself, nah. I absolutely respect right. that. Pretty, I'm pretty cool with sharing because I think it's a, it's a pretty unique thing as it is anyway. It's a pretty small, uh, small group of people that take these things on. It's when it turned out I had this hill just around the corner from where I lived. I used to avoid it cause it's just nasty going, right. <laughs> going up that 20, 20% 20 bit. Most, most people sort of avoid that hill, but uh, I sort of thought oh, it's, it's pretty good because it actually changes a little bit in, in elevation as well. And I, I like that because you just change up a little bit, like you're not sitting on the same cadence, the same right. load the whole time. Can you still look yeah. at it? I actually wrote it wrote, wrote up it this morning. I haven't uh, I haven't ridden much lately, but I've been waiting for, for, for pro riders to basically take it on. So I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm quite, 
quite pleased to be honest. I've kept it for I think it's three three years and yeah. almost three months now. So it's like that's way longer than I thought I'd, I expected to, to to keep it. And I'm I'm, I'm really excited to, to to see someone of your caliber to, to finally go for this because it's yeah I've I've been surprised it's lasted for so long and I really thought there's been a whole lot, whole lot of pro riders that have that have done Everest things. Mm. Um, so and I expected them to be quicker to be honest. But you do need the right hill and you do need to. Get everything right, basically. Right, yeah, you can't, you can't half-ass it. No, that's that's the sign no. of, a, of a champion is someone who wants their record to be broken for the advancement of, of the sport. Um, yeah, you're you're a far less petty man than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I want to keep all my KOMs, yeah. and I want everyone to get slower from now on. <laughs> all right, appreciate no. it, man. On this attempt, as we talk about pacing uphill, uh, we got to figure out the downhill. And super coincidence... Uh, YouTuber Brian Safa, who specializes in downhills, he's like, you don't go uphill. Like, I don't know go downhill, you don't go uphill. Uh, we've got an expert on hand to, to give us some tips. What do you think of this descent? I just saw you blow past at a hilarious speed. Well, first of all, you got to go up to go down, so I do do some climbs. Oh, you don't just, someone to drive you up like No, you? I don't okay. have a car waiting for me like you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this is a perfect one, because you just uh, tuck in, super tuck it. There's no sharp corners, and there's a bit of a tailwind today. As low as possible, and no What's, cars are going to be passing you either. So perfect. one thing that I've been thinking about, I've been doing my yoga and planks, but I don't know if I can super tuck over and over for eight hours. What's the longest you've super tucked? Like the top tube sitting, real Chris Froome style. That was with uh, Jan from Crystal Lake. We did like uh, six, seven minutes continuous. Okay. It doesn't sound that long, but when you're going at 50 miles an hour, okay, across that position, it takes it out of you. Well, I definitely can't do that. So we might. Well, I think. Uh, Tobias said that he just he just did this. He just got kind of low on the bars. Yeah, I stay in the drops. So yeah. I got good control on the brakes. Okay. And I'm always like super alert and ready to pop up. Right. Yeah, and that's get into okay. Emergency braking if needed. In the in the bike races, we would just be as small on the front and do this, and if you hit a pebble, you would die. Uh, so I don't do that no more. Yeah, the, top, the holding on the uh, tops here is probably a little faster, but unless you got a closed road, I wouldn't. Right. recommend doing that. Okay. All right. Appreciate it, man. No thanks, for the, thanks for the cameo. Good luck out there. All right. Go, go so uh, coast somewhere fast. <laughs> See you guys later. All right. So uh, here's here's our climb. We did uh, we did tests at 340 on accident because we're bad at math. And then we did 280, 290, 300. How many minutes up and how many minutes down? Like, what's our lap? We're aiming for roughly an eight-minute lap. Eight-minute lap. Is that's our target. It's just under seven up, just over one down. Okay, seven minutes up, one minute down. Yeah, that's it. I guess uh, we got our climb, huh? Yeah, I think we found it. Sort of serendipitous that it happens to be a very local climb for us. Yeah, this is a. Uh, everyone's seen it from the highway. No one's. Uh, no one wants to ride it. No one's ridden it really more than once. Because why would you? It hurts. Yeah, and both both Scotty and Tobias or not Tobias, did local climbs. So I think it's a nice theme to keep it going. Part of, part of what's fun about this is finding the hill in your neighborhood that sort of suits Everesting the best. That's, that's sort of part of the whole project that we've enjoyed in staring at our laptops and analyzing Strata segments. There's ability is a factor, and then I feel like with two hours to go, it's gonna come down to will. And I like that, that Venn diagram of will and ability. Because uh, other pros could do this, they just don't want to. You know, because why would you unless you're us? That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> Reminder, this is a No Kid Hungry charity video. Uh, that's what this campaign is for Everesting. I'm suffering as a privilege. There are people who are actually suffering. Uh, you can help that by clicking the link below. It matters. $100,000 is my goal for the year. That'll get us to a million meals. Uh, thanks for editing. Peace.